So I haven't been taking very many uh, interviews during CES because I want to you know, spend most of my time working on creative projects. However, I've purchased two iBuyPower PCs this year. So we have Bradley here uh, and you have a couple of new things. But, but first off, I want to quickly ask, how do you keep your prices so competitive? And that, that's the reason why I purchased from you. I usually build my own and I think a lot of our audience will be the same. They usually build their own with the prices of everything from GPUs and stuff and CPUs being so sky high and everyone's gouging and everything, it actually is cheaper, quite a bit cheaper to go with iBuyPower. So how do you keep your prices so competitive? Well, well, that's a really good question. So uh, first off, you know, we are one of the largest uh, system builders in North America. So we do, you know, have some decent purchasing power. We can purchase in volume and that helps us, uh, you know, save a lot. Um, we also um, have very good relationships with our vendors. Um, so during times when supply gets short, um, you know, we still maintain our good cost. Um, so we pass that, you know, onto right. the customer, right? So we're not, not you know, we're not, you, right? <laughs> yeah, they're not gouging us. So we're not, you know, we're not gouging the customer. Um, and I think that's a, a big reason why we're able to keep our prices competitive, especially during times like this, um, you know, when everything is, is you know, crazy expensive and crazy hard to get. Cool. So uh, tell us what you have there on the desk, Brad. For CES 2021, we have two products that we're showing off. Uh, the first one is an update to our Element CL desktop from last year. This is the Element CL Pro. Um, these are Element CL, if you're not familiar with it, is our take on the uh, full custom liquid cooled desktop, um, but in a uh, more pre-built um, and you know consumer friendly, both price point availability. You know, this is uh, we wanted to take that high end aspirational. Uh, system that you see, you know, on social media, on Reddit, on Instagram, um, that has all the clear hardline custom liquid cooling, uh, you know, all over the place um, and, you know, make that accessible to people. Um, so that includes, like I said, both from a price point perspective, from an availability perspective, um, we do have these as pre-built, you know, you, so you can, you can see one, you can purchase it and it's already built and ships to you right away. We're very proud of this. It's been very, uh, good for us for uh, the second half of 2020 and going into 2021. Um, and we really felt that it was the time to, you know, update all the hardware. You know, we originally were shipping with NVIDIA 20 series graphics cards, uh, and now we're introducing uh, compatibility for NVIDIA 3080 and 3070 graphics cards. So when it comes to shipping something like this, you ship it with the liquid pre-installed and um... How do you make sure there's no there's no leakage, uh, especially when something's jostled around? This is not just going to be sitting in the floor when someone gets it. It's going to be moving across the you know across the world or wherever it's going. How do you make sure that all the fittings do, you know don't come loose? Is there anything special you're doing, or is it just mainly the the quality packaging? Yeah. So um, actually, that was probably one of the biggest challenges when designing this system was. Uh, you know, making it survive shipping. Uh, custom liquid cool desktops are notoriously fragile. They're very heavy, um, and there's so many points of failure um, that you really just, it's really tough to ship them, especially pre-filled. Um, and of course, you definitely don't want to have your system show up at your door, you know, in a puddle, yeah. right? So, you know, we had to do a lot. We designed a lot of parts from the ground up. So the fittings uh, used in the system are custom designed by us. They are um, push to connect fittings that have a retention mechanism in it. Uh, so I have one of them oh, here. Cool. Uh, if I uh, press this tube into this fitting, what? that's that's secure, that's seal. I didn't have to, you know, turn any uh, compression collar or anything like that. Um, and that it's, like I said, that secures it during transit, prevents leaks, prevents the tube from slipping out. Um, and in the case you do need to replace this tube, right. let's say you turned it the wrong way or you, right. for what got scratched or something, um, you just press down on that oh, collar, the cool. tube comes right out. Uh, but it's very difficult for that to happen by accident, mm -hmm. uh, and that keeps it all in, you know, in one piece. Um, another thing is, as you notice, this tube is pre-bent uh, mm -hmm. at a 90-degree angle. All the fittings in this system, the fittings are set in a precise location um, so that we can pre-bend these tubes and that, you know, they can always go exactly where they need to go. Um, some of these fittings are actually adjustable. Uh, the CPU block, for example, can slide slightly right to left and the connections on the front of the case can move slightly up and down so that if you have a different motherboard, for example, right. um, you can move that block around uh, to fit where the CPU socket is on that board. Um, and that allows us, again, to, you know, treat this like a pre-built system. It's more of a Lego brick, you know, putting together yeah. kind of thing. You don't, there's not a lot of like measuring and chance for, you know, there's a lot of human error that can go into building 
a custom liquid cool desktop and we kind of you know kind of remove that factor everything's measured out there's not a chance of someone forcing a tube at the wrong angle and creating a weird pressure or something like that now with this release mechanism that you have there on the fitting um is that something you developed or is that something you work together with an oem or is that some secret sauce that you're not allowed to give me the ingredients to um, it's actually not something that's too much of a secret. It's just that uh, it's not well applied in computer liquid cooling, but it is uh, something that you will find in, you know, standard home plumbing, these push to connect fittings. They're very uh, popular, especially with um, like water filtration systems. Uh, and so we just took that mechanism and, and scaled it up and uh, made it pretty uh, yeah. for use in our in our desktops. Yeah, that's uh, the amount of pressure you had to use to put that in was like so much less than what I would I would normally need to to connect a fitting. So that's pretty cool. Um, so uh, what if, if someone wants to go on the website and, and grab this? Can you add this to can you add this setup to any system? Or is there only a couple of different lines that have the custom loops? Uh, so we have the setup as a special configurator. Um, so they would only be available with the custom liquid cooled graphics cards. Uh, we'll have, you know, whatever happens to be the more popular graphics cards of the day uh, for the 30 series update, we'll have 3080 and 3070 available. Um, for motherboards, it's um, at the moment Intel exclusive. So you'll see Intel uh, Z490 boards uh, as the uh, board platform. And there's several different motherboards. Like I said, the CPU block is adjustable. Um, so it's there's not a limitation as far as boards go. And then of course the board will determine compatibility with memory and M.2 SSDs and expansion cards. Like you can see, we have a Wi-Fi card in, in this one here, um, here in the bottom. Uh, and then the case itself supports uh, two 2.5 inch SSDs and a mechanical drive. So storage is configurable as well. Let me try to ask a couple of the questions that I think the audience is gonna ask. Um, first off, aesthetically, can you do different colors when it comes to the coolant? Or is it just going to be a clear coolant? Right now, we're going to keep it as just clear. We do have to do uh, some more validation testing on colored coolant. Um, we are, you know, this is something it's kind of a first generation product for us. Right. And we want to make sure that, you know, there's not going to be any long term detrimental effects to the water blocks or things getting clogged. A lot of colored coolant, um, if it's not been formulated properly, can slowly clog up your system um, or it can kind of gel up and, and block things. Um, so we want to make sure that these things are reliable uh, for you know many years. Uh, so we need to make sure if we do uh, offer a color, a pigment or a colored coolant um, that it's not gonna cause any problems. Do you have an ETA on when we can expect an AM4? Uh, version of this? Oh uh, yeah, we're looking at demand for that right now. Um, it's not like there's not like a contract that says that it's Intel exclusive. It was. It's just that at the time we uh, and, found Intel's that it was not a more popular. Behind you, right over there. No, they're, like, they're, they're right not. over there. I can see. I can see a blue um, glow off the side there. I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, it's just a uh, from a popularity standpoint um, because these are uh, gaming focused systems uh, that you know the Intel CPU has been more popular for us for for gaming um, but we do definitely see that um, you know AMD is is now catching up from in a popularity perspective and uh, we're looking at the AM4 option as well just that the block we would need to design a new block uh, to work better with the Ryzen CPUs um, but it's not like I said we're not saying no not saying no so everyone mm -hmm. in the comments let them know if you want AMD. The only other thing would be, uh, as you know, the 30 series graphics cards, 3080 in particular, generates a lot more heat, uses a lot more power, um, and the original cooling system in the first generation case was designed around the 2080 Super's level of power and 2080 Ti if needed be, but the 3080 is even more above that to the tune of 50 to 100 watts, more power that it's dumping into the, um, into the coolant. Um, so we did, have to design a new fan as well. Um, so these are the fans that we'll be using in the updated version of the system. Uh, so these have this swept blade. Uh, it has a lot better static pressure and a lot better airflow to move more air through the radiator and more air through the system to cope with that extra heat. Um, and so the new case uh, will have these fans, four of them, uh, in, in addition to being uh, to having support for the new graphics cards. Do they generate any extra noise? I, I imagine the extra fins probably help keep it you know, so it's not too crazy at a, at a lower RPM. Uh, yeah, we did a lot of testing to make sure that, you know, the new uh, blade design wasn't going to increase the noise level, at least not in any significant way. They are PWM controlled. 
uh, this time instead of voltage controlled. So they do have a larger range of speed, gives users a little bit uh, more opportunity to fine tune, you know, whether they prefer maximum cooling performance at, at any cost or want to keep the system, you know, running quiet, but still have, you know, good cooling performance. Right. All right, let's talk about the uh, other system. Uh, so this is a sort of new ground for us at I buy Power. So this is our Revolt 3 Mark III. Um, at previous CESs, we had uh, shown off concepts for our Revolt 3 small form factor case in 2019 and in 2020. Uh, and this is the third iteration, and this is likely what we will be going to market with. Um, it's a small form factor case designed DIY first, which is a little bit strange for us at I Buy Power. You know, you'd think of us as a system builder, um, but you know, we felt that from the in the small form factor space that people really wanted more of that freedom uh, to kind of build it out themselves. Right. Um, and so, like I said, this is designed as a DIY product first. We will be offering it as a standalone case with included power supply, um, and then the configured version on our website will be a secondary consideration. Is a good way to get like your foot in the door with a, a lot of the builders who just like kind of never even look at the pre-built systems, you know, cause that's what happened to me. I ended up looking, cause I usually, like I said, I, I haven't purchased a pre-built system in 10 years, maybe, and maybe longer. So, but when I got on the website, I was like, oh, this is uh, not at all what I expected. So I ended up buying, like I said, the two systems. So it's a cool way to, connect to a different audience you know we are bringing a lot of our experience as a system builder you know to this case uh, one of the big takeaways we've gotten from our years of configuring various systems millions of different configurations at this point um, is that you know people really do like to you know choose from a wide variety of parts um, you know the tech influencers may say you know this is the best graphics card to use this is the best cooler to use this is the best motherboard to use um, but that doesn't mean that the end user is going to pick only those parts you know they may like the look of another part or they may have some brand loyalty you know to one manufacturer or another uh, and so a lot of the mentality for the design of the specs of this case has been you know just you know anything goes right so from a graphics card support perspective there's a ton of space uh in the front of this case um you can see here you know we have a 2080 super in here right now that's not exactly a you know tiny graphics card but it's dwarfed by the space that's up here in the front of the case you know we've made sure that this case can s support the rtx 3090 and all the different you know companies variants of the 3090 and the 3080 um, we also have support here for a 280 millimeter liquid cooler. So CPU cooling uh, is not going to be an issue with this. Turn it here so the lights can see it a little bit yeah. better. Yeah, Mounted here on the side. Um, so, you know, like I said, that there's, you're not going to run into a, okay, in some situations with ITX cases, you have a choice between, can do you want to have a large graphics card or a large liquid cooler because they'll occupy the same space. Um, and this one, they're they're both available. Um, in terms of other specs on the system, I can pull the other side panel off here. We have very easy to remove very for maintenance, for upgrades, and for the initial build. Uh, we have two 2.5 inch SSDs hidden back here. You can also see the intake for the power supply. So the power supply in this case is a 700 watt, 80 plus gold SFXL power supply and it comes with the case with cables pre-routed and you know made, we made sure that the cable links are good for you know the whatever you're going to be building in here right and now you can also see that with all the panels removed that you have very so, clean access you just went over top of something really quick that i think is kind of a, oh. a big deal for a lot of people who build um you said the cables are pre-routed meaning that you've you've put the cables coming out of the right spots so you don't have to like fuss with that it's a big deal for itx especially because since the design is space optimized you know the cables don't take up zero space um you know so if you use too much cable you're gonna have to put that extra wind it up somewhere by like bundle it and in an, in an, in a small form factor case a lot of times you just don't have that space you can't afford to have an extra foot of of um pcie power cable or SATA power cable to hide somewhere. Um, so that was why it was very important to make sure that these cables um, are, uh, you know, kind of precisely, you know, specced for the length of various motherboards, various configurations where they might end up needing to go, uh, but not any longer. 
Yeah, that, that's been the most, when it comes to an ITX case, that's like the most frustrating part for me. And I, I love to curse, but I'd rather not curse at my system. I'd rather curse later when I'm hanging out, you know? I think that that's actually been one of the biggest design challenges um, for, because this was now going to be probably our fifth um, small form factor case that we've designed. And, and cable management has always been something that's kind of come back to haunt us after the design is finished. Right. Um, and so for this the Revolt 3 Mark III, we're not actually done with it yet. Um, we're, you know, we've taken it to this stage, the prototype that we're showing at CES, um, and, you know, we're leaving it to, you know, some of the media, some of the community uh, to kind of comment on, you know, things that they think we missed uh, or features they'd like to see, features they think is are, are extra, um, to kind of really um, massage it into something that's, that's, even better um you know we're we're not we haven't started tooling it yet you know we we're, we're going to take that feedback kind of make some of those changes to make it the best that it can possibly be what's the airflow uh like on this system like uh, is there an exhaust somewhere that i'm missing or general diagram of how the air is going to flow through this gpu please? up here in the front um and it kind of sits in its own little space if you can see uh, where the radiator mount is here, it forms sort of a natural barrier mm -hmm. uh, to where the GPU's air is going to flow out of this side. And all the sides of this case are mesh, so every side of the case can serve as an intake or an exhaust. Um, the radiator obviously is right here. Um, if that was an exhaust, it would come straight out the side of the case. If it's an intake, uh, it'll go into the case, kind of push into where the motherboard is, um, and then out the back. Um, you can see this would be the back where some of the, the power supply is mounted here, and that's going to exhaust out the back of the case, as well as if you have this radiator as an intake. Um, there's actually a lot of space in here for airflow. I can get my whole hand in between the motherboard and the, the fan on the radiator. So that's sort of how the airflow goes uh, through the case. We wanted to make sure that also, like I said, no matter which components you put in here, different kinds of graphics cards have the air exiting in different locations. And this whole you know, space up in the top here and along the sides is all open um, so that air can escape and you don't have the graphics card recirculating yeah, I think that's uh, its own hot air. With something this small is if you put solid panels all the way around this, it might be difficult to, to keep cool without like making sure the air is going in a certain direction. But now you've sort of left it open so that they can use whatever parts in the air can go just in and out wherever it wants. So that'll probably alleviate many of the concerns when it comes to that. I, I, I would think, I don't you know, obviously have to test something like that out, but at the mesh side seems to be the, be a good way to go. Are you going to have dust filters on all the different sides? The mesh panels, um, all of them have magnetic dust filters that kind of stick onto the inside of them. Um, and yeah, that'll be on all five sides. There's one on the top too, uh, just in case you have some air, the, the top is meshy as well. So if you have air going through that for whatever reason, there's a dust filter there as well. And if someone wants to, uh, I guess, like put in their two cents on this, do you suggest they throw a comment on YouTube or how are, how are you getting audience feedback? Is it on your Twitter page or so other social media forums? Yeah, we're kind of looking everywhere. Um, a lot of it, we're, you know, we're checking the comments on, you know, wherever news about this is being published during CES, we're seeing what people are saying. Um, we are, you know, speaking with uh, a few of the other people in the tech media to get their two cents worth. Um, and then, you know, our own, you know, Facebook, our own Instagram, all those places. We're kind of like sourcing it from wherever we can get. Cause we know that there's a different type of person that may use one platform or another. Um, and what those, what they might be interested in or not interested can, can vary. So if, if, um, if I go onto the site and this is available, is there going to be a configurator that allows me to sort of just piece together all the parts I want and then leave out the ones I don't? Or what's the plan for like putting together your bare bone? Uh, so for the, there's going to be two ways this will be sold likely. The first is just as a case with power supply. Um, so that'll be the one that you'll see available in all the third party merchants, right? So on your Amazons and Best Buys and New Eggs and mm -hmm. places like that, where it's, it's just the case in the power supply um, and you get to pick all the rest of the parts. Um, and then on our website as a fully configured system uh, with, you know, basically everything that you would need. Uh, I don't think we have any plans to do something in between, um, yeah. you know, but uh, but that is, again, there's nothing set in stone. Uh, if let's say we do get a lot of feedback that people would rather have this also with the liquid cooler because they want to make sure that 
that's going to fit. I mean, we did make sure that every every cooler that we could get our hands on can fit in this. Um, but, you know, if somebody wants that as a, as a reassurance, you know, we're open to that option as well. Almost forgot. On the exterior of, uh, of the Revolt 3, let me put some of these panels back on so that it, previous Revolt systems had all been focused on esports and competition. Um, so they were used in LAN tournaments and, and things like that and by professional players. And one of the features that we had missed we wanted to incorporate into the design of those older cases but it just never really worked out was a handle um so for the mark three oh, we've cool. incorporated a pop-up handle into the top of the case uh so for people that want to move this thing around um it is just small enough to fit into like a carry-on bag um so if people have let's say I, I know people that use small form factors as like mobile editing rigs um, because you can cram a lot more hardware for less money into one of these than, let's say, a really high-end laptop. Yeah, we, um, we took a, a small form factor PC to Taiwan uh, a couple of years ago to do our editing. On the now, now we just send everything back, and because Taiwan's internet's so fast, we could just send it back to the states and let mm -hmm. the, an editor take care of it. But <laughs> when, when you touched that handle and it came, like the handle came up, my brain was like, "Oh, damn! Now I need one." <laughs> but that was it. That was like the thing. I was like, "Hmm." Yep, and it's pop-up because, you know, not everybody wants to just have this sticking out of the top of their PC. We do, like, the clean lines of the design, so it, it will retract back into the top of the case, and you don't have to worry about it. Um, another feature that we have is uh, there's these little pop-out rods that come out of the side of the case alongside the handles. You can hang your headphone or your VR headset or something on it. Um, and again, if you don't want this, if you don't have something to hang on it, you just push it back in and it retracts into the case and gets out of your way. You can uh, find one of these probably in June. That's when our proposed uh, launch time frame is, given that we are going to continue to take feedback throughout the show. We haven't, you know, we haven't started manufacturing it yet. Um, and price point, we're trying to hit a target of about 200 US dollars, including the power supply. Um, so that'll be case and power supply for 200 US dollars. Um, and of course, if it's fully built as a system, you can kind of use that as a reference point versus whatever hardware you put into it. Right, and that's not bad with a 750 watt power supply. That Those SFX power supplies, the 750 watt, I remember a couple of years ago, was difficult to get for a reasonable price. Yeah, SFX power supplies do, um, they're becoming more popular. Um, it's still a little bit tough. And the other thing is they are somewhat case specific. Again, we talked about the cable length. Um, they try to guess what length of cable an SFX case may use, um, but they're not always exactly on the money. And you do end up in with, like we did try a few off the shelf units. Mm -hmm. Usually the cables are too long. And then, like I said, you end up with a, where do I put this cable? You know, how do I snake this around so that it doesn't get into a fan or you don't end up with this big, ugly bundle that's like pressing on something. Uh, so that that's was why we decided to make happens to me. Like when I go to a LAN party, I'll be sitting there and then all of a sudden I'll hear and I'm like, just shake the case until the until I was like, I don't want to open the side panel right now. I'm playing a game. You know, if anyone wants any more information, we do have uh, our press releases. Uh, you know, they've got a bunch of different images. I think there's a kind of teaser video that shows off, you know, all the features in high resolution. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, they can always check that out. Now, my last question has to do with just CES in general, because there's a lot of people online just kind of wondering what it's like to to be doing the whole presentation without actually having a booth. I mean, do you do you like this better? Do you hope that it stays this way, or do you miss going to the big booth and the and having the big, you know, show? It's both ways. I think that I definitely miss meeting with people face to face there's a lot of the experience of showing off a product that gets kind of lost when i'm talking to a camera in a dark yeah. room um but um one of the things i do enjoy uh is the not having to deal with vegas part of it <laughs> um you know the, the while well, even even as an exhibitor we do have meetings with uh our vendors and they're not all in the same place it's just like the media has to deal with uh, you know i'm Going, walking 20 minutes one way, taking a cab, waiting for 45 minutes, you know, to get to different meetings. And I really don't enjoy that part of CES. Um, but the face-to-face -face component, definitely, it, it's, it, I, I, I miss that. Now I, now I miss that. Mm -hmm. uh, first going into it, I was like, oh, this is going to be great. I don't have to wake up as early. You know, I don't have to, you know, walk across the strip. I'm, I'm going to be more well-rested. Um, but it does feel kind of kind of sterile. Kind of, I kind of agree with the whole Vegas thing too. Like I'm not a Vegas person, but 
it, it, it does it is a little weird not being able to like touch everything and pick stuff up and be like what's this do and you know i'm strangely curious when it comes to things i'm always like don't touch that you know i'm like oops sorry but um so hopefully that answered a lot of the questions that the audience is going to have if you have any more everybody out there in the audience put them in the put them in the comments because you know i'll be sure to share anything that i think is a good idea and i'm sure you'll be looking at stuff after the crazy ces week is over so um brad i really appreciate you uh showing the audience all the cool stuff um again can you give me the names of both cases just so everybody can remember yeah, so this is the Element CL Pro with uh, support for our RTX 30 series, and this is the Revolt 3 Mark III. Uh, this will be probably around April. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, we, we are already done producing this. It's just a matter of getting GPU supply and getting our stuff shipped in. So we're, we're targeting April for when, you know, we're pretty sure people are going to be able to buy these without having to worry about it. All right, so everybody just keep refreshing your browser pages until April. <laughs> yeah. And what if they show up early? You never know. <laughs> Gotta be ready. <laughs> All right, Brad, I really appreciate it. Thanks very much. Yeah, thanks for having me.